just about every game of Bradley Beal's career. And I've watched his, his drive, determination, and well, just out flat out desire to want to get better, not only each game, but each practice. And, and I'm sure it's, it's fueled by his wonderful family strength, his wonderful sons who urge him on. But I, I hear the rumor Mama Beal is the real secret to this thing. And then she's really driving it. And, and, uh, and I see the, the nod from Bradley Beal. That's the truth, right? Amen. 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 So let's Amen. shout out to moms everywhere who make it happen. I know that uh, Beal is only uh, the second player in franchise history uh, to play for our team for 10 or more seasons. The other player, a guy named Wes Unsell, Hall of Famer Wes Unsell. And like Bradley Beal, Wes Unsell, a Hall of Fame person, because Bradley Beal is certainly a Hall of Fame person if you really get to know him. I, I know the numbers, and I've got these stats that they can tell me about that he's closing in on Elvin Hayes to be uh, the franchise leader in career points. Yeah, you can, you can tally that, but what you can't tally is the number of lives Bradley Beal has made a difference in in our city. You can ask the folks at the, the Ron Brown, the kids at the Ron Brown College Preparatory School, or you can ask his teammates, or you can ask me, or anyone that he comes into touch with. He makes a difference because he cares. He really, really cares. And he cares about other people and our city. Because Bradley Beal is not only the, the face of this franchise, he is now very much a part of the fabric of our city. Or is, I think I read it somewhere, Bradley Beal is dedicated to the DMV. And with that, we'll begin the uh, formal portion of our press conference. Doing a good job keeping your Zooms on mute. I, I, I need this full-time job, so keep your Zooms on mute. But it's time now to hear from the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Monumental Sports, Ted Leonsis. Ted, I know it's a special day for you. Thank you, Dave. Welcome, everybody. And before we begin, I wanted to note and pass on to our friends, partners, and colleagues um, that as an organization, we are shocked and saddened by the tragic loss of former Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, and our organization stands with the people of Japan, and we're thinking of you, and uh, we look forward to seeing all of our friends and colleagues um, early in the fall when we go over and play a game. Um, it is a terrific day. Dave, you can go through all of the specifics, but to me, uh, it really cements what we are trying to build. We want to have great, great players that we draft and develop and sign and who basically put their own heart, soul, um, and passion into helping us build the winner. And I looked at what we did with Bradley during this offseason really as a culmination of discussions and planning and work that we've done with he and his family over the years, which is, will you commit? And will we commit to you to work together to try to build something great? Obviously, players uh, in the league, they have lots of choices. And Bradley made the choice, which I think is the right one, certainly was one in alignment with the way I look at the world, which is this is hard work and many hands are going to make light uh, work. And our focus is now how do we build the team that continues to have upside and can improve? And if you can show the industry, show the world that you can draft, develop, keep great players, that's how you start to make your way into become a destination. And we think now with the team that we've put in place that Tommy has been building, we will have a very, very good team and we'll continue to be able to improve the team because players around the league will see that we reward and we are loyal to the people that help to get us here. I'll also say that I appreciate very much Brad's family, uh, Brad's representation. Uh, they've worked with us and will continue to work with us to make the Wizards a 
better organization and one that can really become a destination for other players. Um, I, I also think that this deal uh, really speaks to Brad and how loyal and how hard working he will be uh, to the benefit of the Wizards and his teammates. Um, he doesn't want to be traded and we don't want to trade him. And for us to have that kind of commitment, especially in today's NBA, I think was really a testament to what was in his heart and soul about the importance of loyalty and knowing that he would be here. And we have a lot of work to do over the length of his contract because Brad wants to win. We want to win. I want to win. And it's going to take time for us to continue to improve the team. So I'm very appreciative of um, the blood, sweat, and tears that he's going to put into the organization. Uh, he knows how committed we are to continue to invest and do the right things in the right way so that we can build um, the Washington Wizards into a really, really great team. And so I'm looking forward to uh, answering your questions. Tommy, Wes, and Brad are here, and I'll turn it back to you, Scott, uh, to kick us off uh, formally up on the dais. All right. Thank you, Ted. As, as always, as Ted mentioned, uh, Bradley, you, you play with your heart and soul. What's in your heart and soul on this day? Mm. <laughs> um, first, praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for just being here, being present, being in this moment. It's um, so one thing I've learned over the last few years is to embrace every moment that you're in, embrace every step, every everything that you go through, good, bad, ugly. You know, and this is this is a good, but it's also it's kind of a weird time too, because just the climate of the world we're in. You know, it's real tough for me to be super excited, right? We have Brittany Griner in Russia still, right? Highland Park just lost six or seven lives, right? Um, my hometown, St. Louis, from July first to July fifth, there were twenty-two shootings. That's tough, it's three, four days. But this is a celebratory moment for my family and I. But it's tough when I look at my two sons right here, right? And I have to figure out how do they come up in this world that is unpredictable at this point, right? Just careless. But I am appreciative of this city. I am appreciative of Ted, Tommy, coach you as well. But Ted and Tommy, June 28th, 2012, you guys drafted a just turned 19 year old on my birthday. I always said that was the best day of my life. Somewhat still is. And I fast forward 10 years, I feel like I'm doing it all over again. And like, I'm, I'm beyond excited that I made the decision that I made. I'm happy, I'm at peace with it. Um, this city has loved me from that day, June 28th, 2012. They've taken me in, welcomed me with open arms as a <laughs> young 19 year old with no facial hair, <laughs> <laughs> right? And, I got a little peach fuzz now, but <laughs> so it's, I'm working on it. But this city has loved me through, through the ups and downs, right? Um, through moments in which I was injured and injury prone was my label, right? Through me pushing through that and playing 82 games in numerous years and then being an all-star, making all NBA. Like these are all things that a lot of people didn't think I can achieve. I look at myself and I didn't, probably didn't think I can do it, but I pushed myself. I had an organization that pushed me. I had Ted, uh, his comment and his quote always sits with me, to whom much is given, much is expected, much is required. That always sticks with me. So nobody critiques themselves harder than me. Nobody pushes themselves harder than me. And it's amazing that now I can just sit here and 
be proud of myself for once. And I, I have to thank this organization for giving me this opportunity because it doesn't come, it doesn't. So thank you guys. Bradley, thank you for sharing your heart and soul. And again, it's part of what we're about is basketball, but it's also community and, and uh, connection. And uh, that's also what we're talking about today. Tommy Shepard, you just heard uh, some of the words of Bradley Beal, your thoughts. Well, you know, it's, it's such a great day for the Washington Wizards franchise. And what an unbelievable opportunity as we go forward showing the NBA, this is a destination, as Ted said, and we have the opportunities to, to show the NBA what happens, the commitment that we'll make to our players, to their career. You're talking about one of the most coveted free agents in the market, resigning with the Washington Wizards, committing to, to what he believes he can win here, and we believe we can win here. And I know it's so hard right now, the emotions of the day, when you're, you're thinking about all the things that go on in the world, as Bradley said, and I just look and I see where it all starts and staring at his family right here and how much that means to him. That's his bedrock. That's his navigational device, his compass that he chooses every single day to represent his family, his name, and putting his name with the Wizards, this partnership that we have together. You know, when we drafted Bradley, I called him, but we talked the day of the draft, before the draft ever happened. I say, happy birthday, and tonight you're going to be a Washington Wizard. I believed it in my heart that day, and every day since. And it's funny because as Bradley started playing, I would tell him, I'd, I'd say, hey, you know, I got a call today from Mitch Richmond, Chris Mullen, Michael Finley, all the old heads in the NBA call and say, hey, that kid right there, I, now I would have loved to play with him. He reminds me of us back in the day, how we play. So now with this year, we're going through the draft process and all these kids come in and say, hey, these new generation guys we're interviewing, they said, Bradley Beal was my idol. That's who I want to be like. <laughs> and I realized how fast 10 years go by. And I watched this player every single day what he did for the Wizards out on the floor, practice court, his leadership. And then I see what he does in the community. And that's who we want to be exemplar for our franchise. And so I thank you, Bradley. I congratulate your family. I congratulate you for everything. But there is also a great deal that's expected moving forward. And nobody expects more from Bradley than Bradley, except maybe me and Wes <laughs> and Ted. Because I know we look back a year ago, we were in the, we were at, uh, the playoffs in Philly. And there's only five players left from that team. We've added nine new players since the start of last season. We are not going to sit still. We're going to continue to get better, to acquire more talent, to develop more talent. But it all starts with the, the cornerstones and the people that we rely on to set the tone and to move forward. And we are very confident in Bradley's leadership, very confident of the player, and very confident in our future. So thank you, Bradley. Indeed, thank you, Bradley. And it's uh, not lost on me. It was almost a year ago at this time, we... Uh... We uh, welcome family back to Washington as we welcome Wes Unsell Jr. as head coach of, of the franchise that, uh, quite frankly, his father helped build. And now you're coaching the franchise and coaching our franchise player, Bradley Beal. Well, uh, you know, Dave, uh, I think it's a great opportunity um, for me to express this to Brad. You know, for 10 years uh, as an opponent, you, you think you have an idea who, who a guy is. Um, and then almost a year later, um, you realize there's so much more depth to the man, uh, to the leader, uh, to the individual, his passion, um, his competitive fire. Uh, it's underrated and it's, it's very unique to see a guy of, of his caliber, his stature commit uh, to not only the organization, but uh, to his team. You know, I think it's, it's understated in, in this day and age that a young man would do that um, and make the decisions that he's made. Um, so I've grown not only to admire the player, but uh, to really have a lot of respect for the man, uh, not just for, for what he can do on the floor, his, uh, the things that he brings to the community, uh, you know, how he tries to help propel this organization, and take step after step to get to where we want to be. So, you know, once again, I, I know this is a, a celebration, but it's also an opportunity for us to celebrate you, uh, celebrate your family. And uh, we've got a lot of positive things to look forward to. So I'm really excited for the opportunity to, to keep moving this thing forward. Um, you know, Tommy, obviously Ted, um, this, this partnership's a, a big piece of it. So 
Congratulations. And, uh, you know, we, we, as we always say, we've got a lot of work to do. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. And Bradley Beal has a, a lot of playing left in his career, but I'm just going to say it right now. I think one day you'll make one heck of a coach. You have the best behaved young boys <laughs> I've ever seen. And, and that's great father and coaching. And, and again, it's so glad that they're here today and they're doing a wonderful job. But the, the zone defense you got them on is, is just tremendous. Yeah, we got to go zone now. We got one another. So. <laughs> and another one on the way. Round number. So. All right, with that, we'll bring in the question and answer portion of our press conference. Uh, and we'll start with our, our members of the media. They're actually in, in Las Vegas on Zoom because Summer League is uh, going on. Again, Ted Leonsis is with us, Tommy Shepard, Bradley Beal, of course, and Wes Unsell. We'll begin with uh, Ava Wallace. Ava, are you there? I am. Thank you very much. Um, Ted, those were really beautiful remarks, Bradley. Thank you for that. Um, Ted, I wanted to ask you, since you mentioned how you guys don't want to trade Brad, Brad doesn't want to be traded, and obviously you've spoken of, of the deep loyalty uh, over many years. Um, I'm wondering, and I'm, I'm asking because it is such a rarity to have that formally included in a contract, uh, why did you want to take that extra step and uh, include that in Brad's deal? You have to trust me that I, I just, I've come back from a lot of league meetings. I'm back on my way out to Vegas. And several fellow NBA owners have said, um, I wish we had a relationship like you have with your players. There's a lot of um, movement, a lot of non-partnership that you see around the league. And for there to be a public statement that essentially says we have a player who wants to be here and serve out his contract, as do we. Uh, that allows your general manager to plan and to be able to have the confidence that your best player, um, your bedrock player, is a part of the process. And so that was something that we did. And when the player brings that to you, um, we're not naive, right? I mean, I've seen, I read the press on occasion, and I, I see what people are thinking. I, I didn't take it as a point of leverage, I took it more as a point of partnership. And all we can do is show you that that's what we're in this together. And so, you know, this was another way for us to show Brad our commitment to him. And, you know, with that commitment, it's helped us now to take the next step and rebuild and get the team to where it should be very, very competitive, playoff caliber, keep adding young talent, uh, be able to bring in players like Tommy's done during the off season via trades and free agent signings and, and be in it for the long term with us. Okay. Okay. Ava, you okay? I will go to Chris Miller in Las Vegas. Chris. Dave, thank you very much. Uh, can you guys hear me, by the way? I'm in the airport. I apologize. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, Bradley, yesterday, I spoke, the other day, I spoke to Monty Morris, and he said, even before coming to D.C., he recognized that you were, if not the best to guard, one of the best in the league. And it is his job to, quote, make you believe that every day that you play with him. <laughs> what does that make you feel when you hear a guy who has not even played on the team with you yet that has that much confidence in you as a leader? Uh, that's amazing, um, especially, you know, me being a fan of, of him as well and what he's done in Denver over the last few years. And Wes can attest to it. Like, he's he's all about winning, and, and he's all about, you know, boosting his teammates up, you know, whether it was Will, whether it was Jokic, whether it was Jamal. Like, he was always about building up his teammates and making them better. And uh, that's kind of the same mentality Russ had. Russ was the same way. Like he came in every single day and made sure that I knew I was the best two guard. Every time I stepped onto the floor, you're the best two guard. And that's that's always you need that as a player at times. You know, you we have confidence, we have an ego. Um, but you know, to be able to have it amongst your peers and your teammates tell you no, know, like that's like constructive criticism in a way. That's how I take it. Like he's kind of challenging me and telling me to be better, to lead us. So I'm appreciative of it. You know, Monte is my guy and I'm happy. I'm happy he's on board. 
Okay, Chris, thank you. And enjoy your first class seat, by the way, Chris. We hope that the uh, flight goes well. Leaving ping nuts alone. So you... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I got you. All right. We know you're not in the middle seat. All right, let's, uh, David Aldridge. David? Uh, good afternoon. It's good morning here in Vegas, but congratulations to uh, to you, Brad, and, and to everyone. Um, now that, that this is done, um, I do wonder what is the blueprint as you all, all of you see it, Brad, Tommy, Ted, for doing what you, what you want to do now, which is build a team around Brad that's good enough to compete, to compete and contend for championships. How do you do that now, Brad? How do you, you know, do the dance with, with other players who may want to come to DC? Tommy, how do you make it happen? Ted, how do you, you know, approve or, or deal with the, with the obvious expenditures that it may take to put a team that good around Brad? Well, I won't put words into Ted's mouth, but Ted, Ted is all about winning and whatever it takes to, whatever it takes for Tommy to make the team look like that, he's all about making that happen, you know, and that was a big part of my reasoning of coming back was his commitment to winning just as well as mine. And a lot of that does fall on me. A lot of it has to do with winning. We win, we attract those free agents, we attract those guys that we want to get. We attract other uh, all-stars like KP. But at the same time, we trust Tommy to make those type of moves and not stay stagnant and, and kind of improve our team as we go. So, you know, all I can do is trust continually what he's done and continue to trust myself, trust my teammates. And we have to, it's on us. Like, we can't continue to sit about it. Like, I'm here, right? That's, it's over with. Like, now our commitment, like you said, GA, is, is to win. Right, it's very tough as coach knows to win in this league. Like it's not easy. So let's let's not sit here and act like oh we're going to hold up the ladder. Like no, like we're going to continue <laughs> to build and get better each and every year and each and every day. You know that's what we can and that's what we will do. All right, David. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Matt Paris. Matt, are you with us? Yeah. Um, hey, Brad. Uh, just following up on that, like, what gave you confidence um, that that Ted's all about winning, or just kind of the, the past three years and you know, you've said that you've wanted to make this decision about winning. Um, just kind of what led you down that path? Oh, uh, my confidence has always been in Ted, and we've always been very thorough and straightforward with our relationship. Like, he's never lied to me. He's never sugarcoated anything. He's always told me that his desire for this organization is to win. If it was anything else, if he'd have told me otherwise, I probably wouldn't be sitting here, right? But that wasn't his desire. That's not Tommy's desire. Damn sure isn't coaches. So, like, we're approaching this thing here strong. Like I believe in this vision. Um, and a lot of it falls on me. Like a lot of it is for me to come out and be the player that I know I can be, be the leader I know I can be and and lead this team. Like I want to win a championship and I want to do it here. And I've said it in plenty of interviews before, if I stay in DC, respect the reason that of me staying is, the, is because I believe that I can win here, right? I believe that we can win in DC, right? And so, with the guys we have, I haven't stepped foot on the floor with KP yet. That can be dynamic. Me, KP, Kuz, Gab, like we got some, we got some tools over here, right? So now it's it's a matter of up to us players to get out there and get our arms and feet dirty and and, and put the work in. Yeah. You kind of referenced it, but you said something along the lines of like it, it's over with. I'm here now. Like, how, how much do you think? How much do you hope this contract kind of ends that discussion of whether? you want to go whether you want to stay and that's kind of been the, the narrative about your career so far it's funny chef and i were just talking about it it's never going to end it's, it's not because now you guys are going to be like oh when is he going to lift his claws like, so <laughs> now it's like it's never going to stop you know what i'm saying yeah. so i understand what comes with the territory i understand the position i'm in and uh like i said earlier the big e word i embrace it i embrace this position and uh and and i approach it head strong you know i don't run for any from anything i know it's going to be a challenge but I don't think God gives me anything that I can't handle. So I trust my trust my tools, trust my relationship with him, and I'm ready to go. Thank you. Right, thank you, uh, Matt. That, well, there were actually three trade rumors just coming down the hall. That's, yeah. a, that's a joke. <laughs> that's the, you're right. It's not going to. And the soundbite. I don't want to add it from people. He says we can win here, and that's that's what why he's here. Josh Robbins is next. Josh. Thank you, Brad. Over the last few years, many players have sought to lure you to their teams, uh, including over the last year. How can you personally go about reversing that 
and try to bring the players who would be desperate to play with you on their team potentially to Washington? Uh, I hate comparing us to a small market, but there are small market teams out there that are winning, that have built up what they have. They built up through the draft. They're building up their young players. Like, we can do that. Like, why can't Washington do that, right? It's not – you see the teams that go and the guys that leave and build – super teams or whatever, and they're not everything with you they pan out to be. And and you guys end up critiquing them even harder, like, damn, look at the decision they made. <laughs> right. So it's it's a it's a damn if you do, damn if you don't. You know, so it's it's all about being at peace, whatever decision you decide to make. And this is who I want to be. I, I can't concern myself with what some other player does or how it went for him. All I can do is concern myself with me, how my life is going, how my family's doing and what's best for us. Like that's Okay, Neil. Neil, you there? Hey, Brad. First off, congrats to you and your family. Um, you know, Dave talked about it. You've done a lot of work in the community. You know, Juneteenth March, Ron Brown School. I guess is there anything on the forefront of your mind that you're hoping to, you know, continue uh, giving back to the community? Of course, of course. You know, it's the work is never done. You know, I'm always, I'm always here strong about that giving back, um, being seen, being involved, you know, being hands-on, you know, it's, it's easy to just throw your name on something, but if you're not involved, if you're not, you know, talking to the people, not developing relationships with our community, then it's, it's, it's purposeful. Like it, it, it serves no meaning, you know, so I utilize my platform and understand that I do have one and try to uplift others and try to recognize other, you know, smaller nonprofit groups or, you know, a little kid who, you guys may have never heard of, but who needs help, who just wants attention for five minutes, you know, because he's sick. Like it's things like those things go way beyond hoops. Like the ball is great. Like I said, I look at my two boys and it's, I'm trying to plan for them. What is their future like? Like they don't, they shouldn't have to touch a ball, right? But I want to be able to provide and make sure that they have their love and care that they need, right? Not everybody gets, I'm, I understand I'm in a blessed and unbelievable situation, right? Not everybody, my mom used to always tell me, not everybody is as fortunate as you. Not everybody has the same blessings as you. Not everybody has the same talent as you. So I try to utilize my blessings and gifts and try to impact others as best as I can. And there's no way of doing that, but in the community. So I said you can, and, go ahead, Neil, I'm sorry. Thanks, uh, for this season, you know, obviously a lot of new pieces coming together is what do you hope uh, is a target goal, a reasonable goal for this team this season? Um, and how do you think it, you guys will be able to, you know, accomplish those goals going into training camp? My goal right now is to get better every day. And it's starting right now in the summer, right? We start up with a little mini camp, get together with the guys, continue to develop our relationships now and build now, right? That's where it starts. I can't, I hate putting, like, I'm done doing that shit. I'm not putting a number on how many games we're getting every year. Like, that's dumb, like, because it's, it's not realistic. Like, we have to hold ourselves how we are on a daily basis. You know, you can only coach and hold yourself and get better on a daily basis. So let's do that, right? And we're going to try to be one and on every day. So yeah. that's my goal. And that seemed to work for another team in this town, one and know every, uh, every day. And as I said, you can add up the points in Bradley's career, but not the number of lives he's made a difference is. A difference in uh, this is why he's in the hall of fame we have another question from david aldridge david okay thank you very much <laughs> i appreciate that hey um i just wanted to kind of fo follow up on um what i had asked before and, and i wanted to ask ted um you know obviously being having been around the league for a long time now whether it's a it's a homegrown team like like golden state uh, or Memphis, or it's a team that goes all in on a super team like Brooklyn, or it's a hybrid of, of those two that, you know, eventually it comes down to having to go into luxury tax, having to do all of that to, to keep a, to put a chance, keep a championship team together. And I just wonder what those discussions uh, were like between you and Brad in terms of how you told him, Hey, we're going to do whatever it takes. Well, David, we, have a pretty good hockey team. We won a championship. We've kept the team together. We've had MVP players. We spend as much money as we can. We have the best training facility. Um, we have great coaching, great staff, great infrastructure. Um, 
We did the same with our WNBA team. We won a championship there. We have the winningest coach in GM in history there. We treat the players first class. We have MVP players who are committed to us and want to stay there. We've entered into new businesses and fields, um, be it the short-lived arena football league. But again, we won a championship there and we were the standout organization. Um, Esports has become a very, very important new category and segment. And we have the best esports team in the world in Team Liquid. You see behind me one of trophies for back to back NBA 2K champs. Um, we've built a great training facility uh, for the Wizards. We've made incredible investments in our health and training. Group. We've made great investments in the infrastructure that's needed to be successful. And when I look, it's all about the Wizards. Uh, when I bought the Wizards about a little more than a decade ago, we blew the team up. Um, we traded a lot of our players. Uh, we didn't resign some of the players and we rebuilt through the draft. And we had three good drafts with John Wall and and Otto Porter and Brad. And now we have a lot of new young players that we've drafted, Rui and Todd and Denny and Corey, and now Johnny Davis. So we essentially have one, two, three, four, five players that Tommy's drafted that are rotation players that are gonna earn time um, in summer league with Johnny, but Corey and Denny and and Rui are really good NBA players and they've been drafted. Um, we know that the NBA is about stars. And so, you know, keeping your stars is like signing a great free agent. And, you know, we'd love to see how Brad plays with Porzingis. These are two very, very skilled, very unique players. And we think that'll be a good tandem and then, as Brad mentioned, having Kuzma, Gafford, who now can be you know, very, very focused on rebounding and defense, and then bringing in a, a group of real professionals, real NBA-grade players like Barton and Monte and Delon, and um, it's just a, a way to rebuild the team while you're participating in showing everyone that you want to win. And I don't buy into the, um, you either have to win a championship or blow the team, team up and rebuild it. I think that you can improve by having your young players take the next step up. I think you can improve by having your players on the floor. You know, we shouldn't forget that Brad missed half the season last year. And it's very difficult to perform at high levels when you don't have your star players, highest paid players, you know, on, on the floor. And so we're going to do everything we can to get that mix right. And we're a free agent away. We will always be looking at how can we improve the team. And Tommy has been given the green light. And I've said no to nothing. And I want to win. The Wizards are where all of our focus as an organization has to be. We're in a big market. We're one of the bigger sports organizations around. Uh, we're one of the few organizations, as you know, that owns our building, owns multiple teams, owns a part of our network. Uh, we are um, accretive, if you will. We want to continue to grow. We want to continue to improve. And so by taking your bedrock player and signing him in a great play in a great building, train in a great training facility, be in front of a great fan base, we're at over 90% renewals already uh, for our season ticket holders. We think next year will be another very, very good year. We weathered better than most teams the pandemic, which basically 
pandemic downturn in the economy. It's a thousand day kind of experience. Um, we weathered that really, really well, which shows the durability of the excellence of our fan base and, and our organization and our business. So, you know, while we're muted in our enthusiasm uh, today, basically because of the societal issues that we're all facing, uh, um, we're very, very positive that we can continue to improve and be a have team. And that's how I kind of look at the league. Are you a have team? And one thing, David, that I'd like you, because you're so experienced here, to understand is uh, you just heard Brad talk about his faith, his family, um, his connectivity with the community. Um, being at peace, those are things that you don't hear from many NBA star players, is it? And to me, that's the biggest selling tool that we have. If you want to be happy, fulfilled, trust the organization, feel that you're a part of something, that there's a higher calling together, this is a great place to do it. Uh, most powerful city in the world. And so, so I'm, I'm, always upbeat um, when you say prove to us that you can win and you want to win. Uh, you can see it everywhere in our organization. And we know that we haven't won a championship and haven't really put a team out that can win 50 games yet. But let's try to do it this year. And let's continuously improve year after year. We are a special city and you can do special things with special people. We'll continue on Zoom and then we'll get to in-person questions shortly. Yaron, I believe you're there. Yaron, you have a question? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so this is a question for Brad. Uh, following up on the, on the younger players, I wanna focus on Danny. What have you seen in the last couple of months of last season and then uh, obviously this summer from him? Uh, what I love about Danny, Danny's uh forget hard work, he's a willing learner. He's a willing worker, right? He, he wants to learn, he wants to get better. He wants to figure out what his niche is in the league. And you can see that the last few months, you know, the season, like coach gave him a lot more freedom to handle the ball, um, to be aggressive, to, you know, make plays for his teammates. And then he took on the challenge of being probably one of our best defenders, you know, if not our best defender, it would decide his ability to switch. You know, so I think he's really finally starting to come into his own of realizing, okay, I can really, be a two-way guy, a legit two-way guy. You know, he's going to continue to improve his three-point shooting. Um, he has a strong build already, but he's work continuing to work out and understanding how to use his body properly in the game. Uh, and I think the sky's the limit for him. Like, he's super young. You know, I think that's what we got to realize. He's super young. We got to let him develop. Um, but at the same time, like, he's he's accepting challenges. Like, he's, he's, he's a willing learner. He's a willing worker. So I love that about him. All right, and one more we'll take uh, from Zoom. I think if we held this at midnight, Christos would still attend. He's, he's always a, <laughs> our man, Christos. And Christos, always, we appreciate you always being with us. Uh, what, what time is it where you are right now? The time is uh, half past 7 p.m. right now. In okay. okay, well, good. Well, uh, Christos, thank you so much for your interest, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Brad, congratulations, first of all. Uh, what does it mean for you to stay in, in DC to play for the Wizards for your whole career and make something great with the Wizards, win a title or become one of the greatest Wizards of all time or to join another team, to create another super team with other superstars in this league and make something there. Why it is so important for you to win something? Oh, I feel like the meaning would be so much greater. Cause you like, you grinded out everything here, especially if we went here. Like you just ground, you ground out everything. You, you proved all the doubters wrong. Like you did everything you possibly could to make it work and you did it. Like that, that will mean everything to me. That will mean more than up leaving and playing with four other all-stars. Like, and, and having conversations with guys who've done that, it's not always great. It's not always fun. It's not always what you think it is. You think a guy is who you think he is and it's totally different. <laughs> like we're seeing that. So it's you, 
like I said, you stay in your lane, you embrace your situation. And uh, for me, this organization has been nothing but good to me. And I, I firmly believe in my heart that I can win here. Here we go. All right, we're gonna go to questions in the room, but Bradley, not only are you smooth, but your family's smooth. I wish people out there could see the pick and roll <laughs> offense I just witnessed between your two boys going from grandma to ma. That was flawless. <laughs> <laughs> they would have gotten an open shot in any league. So, so it's obviously rubbing off. You guys are amazing. Do you have any questions for dad? Where were you on for dinner or say, when's it tell, over? Say, right? I want, want, tell him I want Juan Soto to come teach me how to hit. That's what you, want. <laughs> you want, all right, well. You want candy? We don't have candy, but. Where are the keys? All right. So, <laughs> so. so so there we have it. it it's uh, they're not only smooth, but they have the pointed questions. Where are the keys and where are the candy? All right, nice. with, with that, guys, you are doing so great. I'm amazing, and your the movement between mom and grandma. Did you practice that? That that was amazing. How smooth that was. I believe we'll start with Wes Hall. Wes, impossible to follow the Bill kids. So uh, yeah. here goes. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Brad, on the re-signing. Uh, we've heard a lot of talk about loyalty today, and obviously, re-signing is a great example of that. But when you think about the legacy of Bradley Beal, what does this moment mean? to the legacy of Bradley Beal? It means a lot, but it's still being written. You know, it's not over with, you know, I'm still, it's funny, people like call me old, I'm still young. <laughs> I just turned 29, right? So I still got a lot of years left. I still have a lot in my tank. I don't feel like I have a lot to prove. I just want to win. I got to win. That, that I do have to prove, right? That I can win and be a winner. So that's what my mentality is. That's what my drive is. You know, this is, this has been my home. You know, loyalty has never been in question. Um, biggest thing is, you know, do I believe we can do it here? And are they committed and are we committed? Am I committed to doing that, you know, with them? So uh, I'm just, like you said, I'm excited to be here and let's get it. Like, I'm, I'm ready to go. I ain't gonna lie. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Follow up real quick for Wes. To have a player sign on and show you this commitment, what does it do for you moving into your second year head coaching this team as far as being able to build and develop the, the strategies that you want to employ? Well, it's invaluable. Um, you know, we saw a glimpse of, you know, who he is, you know, in, in just 40 games. So it, it's really exciting for me to know, you know, he'll be healthy and whole. Uh, you know, he's raring and itching to go. But, you know, he adds, you know, the, the compliment that we've added to him uh, this summer, along with, you know, getting KP, Kuz, and those guys, that trio playing together essentially for the first time. Um, I think that the potential of that is, is limitless. So it's, it's very exciting for me as a coach. Um, but, but like I said, he's, you know, the talent, it is what it is. I, that's well documented. I think it's uh, you know, to have him on board and, and know the leadership, uh, the, the character. I think all of those things that play into who we want to be as an organization, uh, how we conduct ourselves as a team. And that collective pull, I think that really helps propel us. Scott? Okay. Yeah, Brad, first of all, congratulations. I know there's a lot of people in Washington. So happy that you're staying here. Um, you know, you just get from St. Louis and you've made a home here in DC. And the word, the terminology, face of the franchise being thrown around. What does that mean to you, that, that terminology and how much pride do you have of being the face of this franchise? Oh, I just, I'm very, I try to be humble about it because I don't put myself above others in a way, but that's kind of how you're projected when you're the face of the franchise. So I understand the position and I embrace it and understand that it's a lot going into what's expected out of me. So that part I get, but it's about us as a team. How can we build this all together, right? How can I build up my teammates to be better, right? To be, hell, I want to make them max players, right? I want to, shit, I do. I want to help them build up their careers. I want to make them better, help see their potential in this league. Um, and it's really up to franchises and great organizations and great GMs and owners who trust you. You have to develop those relationships to be that, right? That's. So when I said earlier in my remarks, like it's, that's why I'm grateful. Like these opportunities don't come all the time. 
You're not always given a chance to be the face of a franchise. You're not always given a chance to be the guy, essentially. So I'm honored and blessed beyond beyond measures, for sure. And I'm ready for it. And a follow-up really okay. quickly. You know, you see your family here, your children, um, to, to sign this big contract, you know, generational changing money, mm -hmm. to know your family set for life. You, I mean, what, what what is that like? for you emotionally to know, you know, they don't have to pick up a basketball. They don't have to grind. Uh, it's, like, it's a love hate thing in some ways, because I'm hundred percent blessed to be here and know that they don't have to work for anything. I'm speaking of my boys, but it's also sucks to know that they think that they won't have to work for anything. <laughs> so, I have to try to find that balance and, and figure it out. Uh, but it's, you don't see it all the time, especially in the black community. So like it's it, it speaks volumes. I understand like these my two parents are sitting right here right now. Like I wouldn't be here without them. I wouldn't honestly touch a ball without those two. Like they've taught me everything I know from hoops to financial literacy. Right. And so um I, I just thank them, man, because they're my biggest blessing. Um, I'm honored that I can be in this position for my family, for sure. I think any 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 of us would, any any player would would 100% be grateful that they can put their family in this position, for sure. Wayne, do you have a question? Hey, Brad. First off, congratulations on your deal. Thank you. You look at the sign that says "Dedicated to the DMV." For the fans that believe in you and uh, support you, just what would it mean to you to, to like you say, bring a winner here and a, and a championship here for them? I know what it mean. Everything. The city is hungry for a championship. The city is hungry for DC to the Wizards in particular to be that team again, right? They want us to be relevant. They want us on TV all the time. They want this, you know, cap one packed out, right? And it's up to us to do that. You know, we can't talk about it and say we're going to do this do that like we gotta we gotta put into action we gotta go out there and win games and that's my main focus and drive it ain't numbers and all that it's how we get w's like i want to see dub after every game that's what i want to see that's my goal all right um you're about to find out where your dad's keys are so uh, you, you've done well nice round of applause for bradley beale's <laughs> sons and, and the, um, Boy, amazing family to, to witness today. And that's that's what this day really has been about. Uh, a special organization in a special city coming together with us. No, 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 sir. No. no. <laughs> okay. Right. So he was good. That, that's... Yeah, I have the keys. You know how to drive? Uh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll give them to you after this, please. One second. All right. So one wants a car, one wants candy. That's <laughs> simple. That gets you through life. I get a special day with special people. Thank you for sharing with us. And again, congratulations to Bradley Beal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.